In today's video, I'm going to show you how to find an SVG icon, put it inside your Power App, and animate it yourself with your own custom animations. And in this case, we're going to do it with a hamburger icon so that you can open and close your menu in a very cool way. So here's our starting point. This is a template I've already created. We already have a functioning open and close on our menu, but we don't have the icon to show us what's actually going on or what's going to happen when we click on that. I do already have the image ready for it, which is my image menu close, but I have no SVG code in there, so there's nothing to display. So first, let's find the icon we need, which we're going to find from iconify.design. If I search for hamburger, I can just choose one of the hamburger icons I like, make sure I've got SVG selected, and then I can click on this icon here to copy the code to my clipboard. Once I've got that copied, I can open up VS Code and paste it in and then press Ctrl and H to open up the find and replace. And I want to replace the double quotes with the single quotes and then hold down Ctrl, Alt, Enter and it will replace everything. Then press Escape to remove that and then Ctrl and A to highlight everything and Ctrl and C to copy it. And then I'll just Alt Tab back to where we were. So now back in the app here, let's go to encode URL and paste in our SVG code. So the icon is there, you might not be able to see it because at the moment it's black. So let's change the stroke to white and then now you can see the icon. Let's tidy it up because we're going to be working with this quite a bit. And let's also have a look at what we're working with. So we've got our SVG tag, we have a G tag, and then we have a path, another path, and another path. So those are obviously our three lines in our hamburger icon. So what we're going to do is add a style tag to our SVG. Inside of this style tag is where we can put our code for animating. But first we need to allocate some classes to each of our lines. So let's call them say top mid for middle and bot for bottom. And then we need to assign those classes to our paths. Now let's set up our animations. So every animation needs to have a name. So again, let's do this quite straightforward. So again, we'll just do animation top, mid, bot. Next, we need to say how long the animation is going to last for. So this is animation duration, which will give it 500 milliseconds. And finally, we need to put in animation fill mode and set that to both. And what this code will do is it will tell the animation that once it's finished, it should stay where it is. If we didn't put this in, the animation would restart. It would go back to the beginning, even though it wouldn't run again. So for instance, if we clicked on the hamburger icon, it would turn to a cross and then it would suddenly turn back into the hamburger menu icon again. So now that we've got all of that, we can start animating things. And we do this with keyframes. And of course, we need to put the name of the animation that we've got, we're setting the keyframes for, which is our top animation. And what do we want to do to it? So let's say at 0%, we want the rotation to be 0 degrees. So basically, 0% we want it to stay as it is. But when it reaches 100%, and I'm aware that I've spelled transform incorrectly. When we get to 100%, we then want to rotate it because we need to turn this so that it begins to look like a cross. And there we go, we can see it rotating, but we do have a slight issue. It's rotating on an anchor point that means that it's going outside of where we can see it. So we can use transform origin 
to just move it. Um, and let's just move it, say, vertically 10 pixels and horizontally 18 pixels. Yeah, that looks pretty good for now. So now the middle bar, that's a bar that we don't actually need. We don't want that at all. We just want that to disappear. So we're doing the keyframes for the middle bar. And this time we want to say that the opacity should be one to start off with. But when it reaches the end, we want the opacity to be zero. We want it to disappear. So there we go, it's disappearing. So as you can see, animating SVGs can be quite simple. So we'll do a similar thing to what we did with the top one for the bottom one. We want to rotate it. This time we want to rotate it backwards, so minus 45 degrees. But again, we've got this issue with it aligning incorrectly. So let's transform this one as well. That's better. So now we've got a nice cross that's being created. So while that's all well and good, it's just animated once and it's not actually doing anything else. What we really need to do is tell it, I want you to turn into a cross when the menu is open and I want you to turn back into the hamburger icon when the menu is closed. So the simplest way of doing this is just to change the keyframes around. 0% becomes 100%, 100% becomes 0%, depending when the menu is open or not. So if the menu open is true, then this is at 0%, otherwise it's at 100%. And then with this one, it's at 100%, otherwise it's at 0%. And then it's the same the whole way down. So now what this means is that when we click on it, it changes to a cross. And when we click on it again, it changes back to a hamburger icon. But I don't know if you noticed something there. It's not animating every time. And the reason for that is because your browser has cached it. So what we need to do is refresh it every time. And what I've done is on the menu button, I'm setting a timestamp so that every time the user clicks on this, this timestamp's going to update with the latest timestamp. And we can then use this to force our SVG to update itself. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to attach the timestamp to the CSS classes. So we're just appending the timestamp to the CSS classes. And don't forget to do it on the paths as well. So now what's going to happen is it's going to update that element every time we click on it and it won't get confused. It won't be caching it because it's caching a different class. Now we're almost there, but there is one slight problem with it still. I'll save it and I'll close it and I'll open it and I'll show you what the problem is. So hopefully you saw that the problem there was that the icon changed as we loaded it. So what will happen is when the user opens the app, the icon will animate as they open the app. And we don't really want that to happen because it's not very professional. So we can make just a small change to it and that will fix that. What we want to do is say that if the menu hasn't been clicked on yet, let's just set the animation duration to zero milliseconds. This means that when they open the app, it will be zero milliseconds, so they won't see an animation. So if that menu open variable is blank, then let's just say it's a zero millisecond animation. Otherwise it can be the 500 milliseconds, which is what we want when the user clicks on it. Let's just make sure that we do this across the board, so to all three lines. And let's double check that our animation still works. Perfect. That's it. 
So what we've done here is we've taken an SVG icon from Iconify and we've modified the code so that we can animate it the way we want it to change. Think of the possibilities, it's incredible.